Big Stevie, it's a celebration tonight. 200, man. I'm, I'm grateful that you've been a part of it on the ladder, on the backside, so to speak. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of it, man. Congrats. Man, I appreciate it. It uh, Honestly, it just feels like we were celebrating 100. And <laughs> so that's uh, generating a lot of content and having quality people like you and, you know, Hargrove Roofing. You know, know, know who's on your roof. And so the, the entire team, it's a team effort, my friend. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. I'm, oh, I'm happy to be a part of the team. Man, I am too, man. Hopefully you and I, you know, we're going to celebrate 300 soon, I hope. No question. Yeah. Um, but I would like to celebrate win number seven for Texas, and that's got to be put on hold. Uh, we're going to break down a lot of things, brother, and we'll go in order here. Because I know you got a lot to say, and I'm here for it. Yeah. I am here for that. Um, I want to bring up a photo from yesterday. We were able to cross paths, you know, at the tailgating scene where you, you and some other former players, uh, who all, a couple of them are friends of the podcast, so to speak. Man, look at those beautiful people. It's good looking stuff right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> Summer in the shade, partially shaded. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I didn't know that you knew my guy Todd Grossman. That you know, that's another another fine human being, fine American. Yeah, man, absolutely. That's good. That's good stuff. Good looking people, man. Uh, we had a we have a really good time. A uh, good time over at the the best damn tailgate in the, on the forty acres. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Todd Hunt, who's been on here as well. Uh, you talk about the guy through organization of things and. And really on the business side of things, probably does it as good or better than anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know what I'm, I'm seeing in this picture? What's that? How much bigger I am of everybody. Oh, you're a, you're a mountain. <laughs> everybody else <laughs> are uh, average size human beings going through <laughs> life like you're supposed to. And then there's a giant right there, man. Golly. Look at all look at all those short white folks. No, no, it's not, it's not even that. Y'all are not short. Y'all are the perfect size that you're supposed to be in this in this world. And then there's a huge guy right there on the end. Like, what happened, man? Stevie just had some good genes, good division one talent. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Prototypical. That was a good time until that was a good time until the game. It really was. And yeah. Before we move on, we got a shout out to uh, Stevie's friends from Shreveport, Louisiana, Hargrove Roofing. Of course, they're here and they, they finished uh, Mama Clinch's roof. Did they uh, really? This past week. Did it in a day and a half. Did they really? So fast. Good. Good stuff, man. Happy for you and Mama Clinch getting the oh, new Oh, buddy. And I'll be Hargrove happy. Hargrove Roofing. I guess, I guess you knew who was on your roof, huh? Oh, I sure did. <laughs> hey, Adrian, the. Uh, project or, or the uh, project coordinator and his entire crew that worked they worked efficiently and they could very communicative everything they did it the, the roof looked solid what was funny was whoever did it before you did it wrong yeah <laughs> Hargrove pointed that out before they basically slapped uh shingles on top of old shingles the guy before yep i don't know who it is mm-hmm but we're not going to write any Yahoo reviews or anything. We we just we got it done the right way with Hargrove Roofing. Right. No Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So before we dive into, there's a lot of ugly to that TCU. I, I, I get it. Much respect to Sonny Dykes and TCU. A lot of respect. They are that good. But Texas, again, should have won this game. And – you know, it was a four, 17 to 10. All those points are pretty much scored in one and a half quarters in the second half. Uh, the Longhorns played a championship level of defense. And I'm just going to show you, uh, Stevie, and the audience, man, this reel right here, this really gives hope moving forward. Duggan has the pocket collapse around him, and he's dropped for a loss. Baron Sorrell. Duggan under pressure again and knocked down. And then Sorrell. Duggan running out of time. Cannot escape. Yet another sack. Four. And one more time. Duggan's under heavy pressure and sacked for a fourth time. 
Pressure again. Duggan's hammered on the blitz. That was Ryan Watts off the quarter. Mm. Brothers, so being a former defensive lineman, what was different to you? What did I mean? I know there's a lot to love about what what PK Pete Kukowski, the DC, did with that game plan from your vantage point because your opinion matters much more in this situation. No, nah, no, nah, not at all. Um, they did. They played hard. They played lights out, man. Um, it was uh, better than what I've seen in the past few games. Um, they didn't look tired. They didn't get tired. Look like. <laughs> Um, but it's it's hard to get tired when you you are making exciting plays like that, you know. So um, <clears throat> defense held their own. Um, I always say if you hold the other team to under twenty one points, then you're supposed to win the game, right? We held them to seventeen points and we still did not win. So um, uh, it happened that the ball bounces that way sometimes, but you know, here at the University of Texas, hold them to 17 points, you win in a game. My senior year, uh, we lost one game, we held them to 12 points, and we didn't score any. That was OU, um, in uh, what was that, 2004. So, you know, we were all upset about that, but I mean, and, and to be honest. You know, we held them to 17 points by by the defense, and the defense scored that seven points, remember? So uh, when we um, – what was that, the fourth quarter when we scooped and scored? Yeah. The defense today, 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 too. Yeah. yeah. So if we would have – you know, it's all if ifs and buts, you know. But, um, you know, our defense played very, very well for sure. Yeah, and I, and I hate it because I, I was I'm a I'm like you I'm a defensive guy I watch defense more everybody loves the fireworks of an offense uh, Bijan mm -hmm. he provides that a lot um, and, and Roshan and at times we've seen these other receivers Xavier but to be honest with you they do move fast but rarely do we see the up tempo I, if this offense gets into an up tempo. Uh, whenever they do that, they're better, it seems like. But mm -hmm. Quinn Ewers, and I know it's not just one person. He's the quarterback. Quarterbacks get too much praise, too much criticism. But is he, in your opinion, Quinn Ewers It just could not get into any rhythm. Is this solely on him? Because this offense looked awful, awful. It, did. it looked bad. It's not solely on him because we had some big passes that was dropped. Yeah. That hit guys in their hands, you know. Yeah. Um, I can I don't know how many were dropped, but I can think of I can see three in my head right now. Yeah. Right. And they were huge plays. Um, but in the same breath, I think that um yours something has to give because I don't even know if he's hitting a long ball even in practice. He's not even close with those things, man. He's throwing it down the field, wanting somebody to get up under it, and one time the defense got up under it. And, mm -hmm. and, and so um, I, I just want him to stop throwing the long ball until you got it down in practice. Yeah. You know, it feels like to me that he's getting too jittery back there. And um, for game time experience, it, it, he's just – he's antsy, too antsy. Settle down and, and and hit what's in front of you, you know? Yeah. Um, and go through your progressions, man. Just settle down. And if you take a hit, you take a hit, right? But you live to die another day instead of just throwing it and throwing it and throwing it and no one's even getting up under it, you know? So um, I, it's, it's, it's a lot on him. Also – uh, the guys dropping the balls, but also I saw the O line let some guys just run through too. I saw that. I mean, you got the best running back in the country, and what he end up with thirty two yards or something like that. Twelve carries for twenty nine yards. Twenty nine yards on twelve quick carries. That can't happen with B. John Robinson, right? And so um, offense just stalled yesterday. It's just it was it was not all gas. It was not all gas. It was just breaks. 
And so, again, offense only scored three points. That's all, that's all the points that they put on the board when we have Xavier Xavier, and um, and uh, Bijan and um, what's the uh, – shoot, I always forget his name. Roshan. Roshan. And you have Roshan. Like, do something with them, man. Those three get those three guys can get you 14 points some kind of way, you know. So um something's gotta give. There has to be some accountability. Um, and I'm saying all these kids' names and saying the kids, but who we pay to make this change and who we pay to um to figure this out is sharp, right? Yeah. And so that's who has to um, do a better job of putting these kids in a better situation. Well, speaking, sure. of, speaking of uh, Sark, this is what all his response immediately after that loss, which should have been a win. Another, well, let's just say it was theirs for the taking if the offense, I mean, it is pure offensive ineptitude. That's what it is. And this is Sark after the game talking about Quinn um, and that inept all of a sudden inept UT offense. You know, I, I thought Quinn continued to compete. A um, couple of unfortunate errors uh, to where, you know, the ball kind of gets knocked out of his hand and different things happen. He slips. And so it was just one of those nights where things just, we couldn't get into any sort of rhythm. And it, again, I'm sure Quinn will tell you he would have loved to play better, but I think everybody on offense could say the same thing. We all could have played better. But we got to catch the ball. Um, we got to be where we're supposed to be. We got to block. We got to be able to run the football. We got to do a lot of things around the quarterback. You know, it's easy to point it at one guy, but that's that wasn't the case. We we didn't play good offensive football. So I have my take, but I would love to hear your response to what Coach Sark said about all that because we've heard it before. I think I said it um, before. Um, before you, you played that, um, they did not play well. He's exactly right. They didn't, they, there was nothing, they couldn't put anything together, right? Like, there were no adjustments. They came out with the same set. Um, we didn't, you know, we went empty every now and then. We put Bijan out at, at wide out, but that was, that seemed like it was just as a decoy. You know, we didn't use him at all, um, throwing it to him because he has hands like a receiver. You know, he does. You him in the open field, he can he can break it, and because um, you know you have to gang tackle him. You know, so we didn't even try any of all that stuff. You know, um, but I do think that you know it's it's uh, no one was on the same page. Um, coaches did not put them in the, in the right places to be successful and that's on them yeah that's well it. this is going to be a little sobering it is for some people who truly understand what all these numbers mean these are Quinn's numbers to date in the season and then for the last three games and i want to pull this graphic off right here um so you look at a guy first year starting and at that this level first year at starting college i get it those aren't bad numbers as a season. It's not bad at all. But what concerns me right here is this trend the last three games. Below 50%, if mm -hmm. I did my math right, because 54, that's 108. So, yeah, he's well below 50% passing, four TD, only four TDs and four INTs. Now, how do you translate that? What's your – I mean – it's hard because there's nothing positive about it, Stevie. Right. So, and you're right. But we also got to realize and, and think that um, we were in the in the, uh, the gauntlet of the season or we knew our schedule was going to be right. hard at the end of the season. But um, you're right. It's, it's, it should not drop off that much. We are having um, a thick schedule right now with we just played TCU. We just played US, uh, OSU. Kansas you know, State. at home in Kansas State, that this it was a hell of a trick for this uh, last three games. But you're exactly right. Um, 
that that concerns me. Fifty four of no, of one hundred nineteen. It means every other play, you're more than every other play, you are incomplete, and that's that's definitely got to change. You're either incomplete or throwing it to the other other players, you know. So, um, definitely got to change with that man. But you know, at the beginning of the season, I think he um, he had some kind of fire under him or something like that. You know, yeah. You can see the the the, the pep in his step, and then all of a sudden. You know, I'm not sure if Sharp can Sark can get in, um, get into his head and actually help the kid. You know, I don't know. I don't know if he's being coached the way he needs to be coached. Well, he's he's got the perceived best in the country, Sarkeesian. You've got AJ Milwee, um, Coach Flood O line. I mean, you're supposedly having the best top tier coaches and assistants and developers of talent. I mean, why would you not put Hudson card in that game at all last night or Saturday? Well, I don't think we, trust, we don't trust Hudson either though. Right. I mean, we saw that in uh, at Texas tech, right? Like he, he wasn't getting it done either, you know, um, but I get what you're saying. Try something, to, you know, throw something at them. And, right. Yep. You know, but this is the guy that you practice with for the last four or five weeks, you know, and this is the guy that, that knows the game plan and things like that. And you just hope and hope that he's going to, something's going to click for him and and and, and, in a, in a, in a, and a, it'll just turn on. Cause what we really needed, well, all we needed was a, a touchdown yeah. uh, to, to be in this game, you know, and so he he wasn't that far off. It was just he was almost there every time, you know. So it, it it's uh, but that's that's a good question. I mean, you you now open uh, to to foster competition within the team. You open it back up to a competition. Yeah, I'm all for it, Stevie. I yeah. mean, it, you you. When you, it's almost like watching. Okay, last night is when it just dawned on me. And I don't listen to people that are around me when I'm, because I'm still trying to adapt to sitting in stadiums and mm-hmm. being around fans. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's still a little foreign to me, a little bit. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I view what I, and I know a lot of you can, you can understand what I'm seeing. And, and a lot of people who are watching or listening to this podcast can relate. You know, I'm watching. I get it. He's the best quarterback they have on the roster overall. I get it. But it fits in the description of insanity. In a game like that, it's fine. He can be your QB1. But when you're not winning and he's not effective, any other position, you're going to get your butt replaced in the, on the field. Um. Yeah, that, that can happen. But – at the quarterback position, it's a little bit more intricate, right? You have um, you have the calls, the game plan catered to that person, so it's a little bit it's a little bit different. But I get it; something yeah. needed to be done. And, and and trust me, we're I'm in the stands, like we got to do something. And if they would have put a card in, I was like, well, that's something that they're trying. So they're trying. <laughs> They're trying, so uh, I wouldn't have been mad at it, but um, I, I uh, someone's just got to give with one with this quarterback. Right, he was supposed to be our guy, and something's got to something's got to give for sure. Well, would you agree that fans are starting to lose faith in him? As yeah, the absolutely. They're losing faith in him <laughs> because we had. The, the Manning royalty in our stadium. Along and, with half of the country's best recruits were yeah. in that stadium yeah. at DKR. What do you think they walked away from? What do you think a lot of them said? Or do they see things much differently than us? Well, when when I was a recruit, and, and this is these are the dogs that you want, that look at the talent on the field and, and look at what happened. It was like, oh, man, we can come in here and change that. We can yeah. come in here. I can come here and do better than that. That's who I want to be recruited. I want the cocky kid to think that he can come and take 
Ewers' position. Right. Yep. He thinks that he can come and take Bijan's position. Not not take over for where Bijan left off. Take his position. You know what I'm saying? That's those are the kids that I want because those are the ones that are going to work hard to try yep. to get. And those are, that's the talent that's going to be on the field. When you when you earn your way, earn your spot on the team by taking somebody else's spot, then you're a dog, right? You you are. You are University of Texas material here, no question. So, um, so I want those guys to take away what they saw was, oh man, this is a great defense, but I can really do better on this defense. I would love to play in this defense because man, they they are moving around and this this and that. He 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 got reached, he got blocked right here. I wouldn't do that. Or <clears throat> the receivers, I can't believe he dropped that ball, man. I can catch that in my sleep. And and then but he's like, yeah, I'm coming to the University of Texas because I can definitely, I ain't gonna drop those balls, you know. So those are the type of players that I want. Hopefully, those are the guys that was, that's what's going through their heads, um, uh, last uh, uh, Saturday. Um, so I, I, that's what I want. I want yeah. them to come to me that way. Um, but these kids are new age now, man. These new age much kids. different, much different. <laughs> I mean, but I, I think that. Um, if you got any kind of fight in you, that's your mindset. Is uh, I, we they uh, the University of Texas lost that game, but I can come in here and help them do this. This is my school, you know, because the game day atmosphere and the game day experience at the University of Texas is like none other. Like I had a really really good time, you know, hanging out with my family and and my friends and things like that, and um, the atmosphere in the stadium. It was rocking. We had fun. And so um, it was a night, cool game. And so, you know, they can take away from that experience that their parents are going to have fun when they come to the games and things like that. So it was neat. It was just neat to see and oh. neat to see all the uh, recruits there. No, it was. It, it was. I mean, a great game day atmosphere. And I also think that certain recruits will see they can identify this team is X, Y, Z away from being great. Yeah, XYZ X, X, and me away from being great. And those are the type of players I want here. And we may we may emphasize XYZ being the receivers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. So we talk about the fans losing some faith here in uh, yours as QB1. Uh, there were a lot of tweets. You know, a lot of people talk. So I, I asked uh, our followers and – about this game, the ineptitude that was last night or Saturday night against mm -hmm. TCU. I thought this one was more entertaining than most. Um, right here. He's a longtime follower of the podcast, and uh, I'll take this off. He's a basket local basketball coach, the Blake Brown. He's a fine American from the panhandle of Texas. He said if Sark were a basketball coach, he would draw up a corner three off a flare screen and skip a pass. Wow. Pretty funny. Brilliant. It is. It is. Brilliant. <laughs> That's pretty funny, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Well, I don't even know what to say to that, man. He's right. <laughs> no, man. We Shark needed to draw something up, man. It that has to. Yeah, he needed it. and and like I said, when he put Bijan out wide, throw put, give him a route, throw him the ball, man. He well, he's such a, a great player that he's gonna go up and fight for it and let him let him see what happens, you know. We never gave the best player, could be the best player in college football, um, a chance to go and fight for us. We never did. Ever. Yeah. There was no chance. Um the thing that I bother you talking about that wheel route. He was wide open when he was going to when they were. I think it was fourth quarter, and then they Quinn checked down, I believe, to the tight end, and did not get the job done. Bijan yeah. was wide open. wide open. The whole stadium saw it. Yep, I was in the opposite end zone, across the field. I was in the direct opposite of that play. And everyone around me saw the wide open man in the field, in the um, 
in the end zone, heading to the end zone. And he did not hit him. Did not. That, you think um, that that's part of that being nervous and rattled as a quarterback? Antsy, yeah. Antsy. Uh, uh, he has jittery feet in the in the pocket, so where he can't make the 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 right the sound and right decision, and who to get it to. There's no tempo, none. Yeah. Um, but the old line was a problem there because I think he he felt pressure quite often. Yeah. Um, I will say this: they still have a chance. They still have a chance to play for a championship. Uh, TCU. Um, clinched their spot in the Big 12 championship in Arlington. They remain undefeated. Mm -hmm. um, and here's the Big 12 scenarios as of today. Um, so we'll pull this off. There's the order. Texas basically in a, in a tie three-way for third. So all Texas needs to do is just win out and hope for an OSU loss and K-State to lose one. K State's got West Virginia and Kansas. It, it, there's no. It's. I'll go back to what you said. This conference is cannibalizing itself. Yeah. Um, OSU um, has Bedlam this week. The the, most, the least talked about Bedlam I've ever heard of in the modern era, in this century. They got OU and West Virginia. Texas mm -hmm. just needs to beat Baylor. Don't worry about what else Baylor does. Yeah. Went out and hoped for two losses, one by OSU and one by Kansas State. By looking at that. Oh, because I, we beat Kansas State. Right. Because if Texas – OSU, tied, OSU yeah. beat us, but their record would be – we'll have a better record with them of them. It, it, if they just mm -hmm. lose one and Texas wins out. It could happen. It's very possible. A lot of football. Yeah. Every game matters in this. I mean, it really does. It's yeah, the same with the CFP. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll see, man. We shall see. You, what's your uh, – on a scale of 1 to 100%, what's your confidence factor in this? I think it's just – it's a 50-50. Yeah. It's a 50-50. It's a toss-up, man, because – OU to save their season, that they can they'll they can beat OSU just to save face on any like they just yeah you know what I mean throw everything at OSU just to say that they beat their in state rival right and um, uh, Kansas can lose or Kansas State can lose who do they have left Kansas State. Mm -hmm. They got West Virginia and KU. And KU's a, obviously a rivalry. Yeah, that's a rivalry game. And and uh, West Virginia, can they can catch fire too, you know? I mean, it's just strange not seeing Oklahoma on here. Yeah. Yeah, it feels good, though. Feels real good. <laughs> 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 so, but like we said last week, or I told Tess last week, it could be a lot worse. You could be in the Aggie situation. Oh goodness! Where they they are three and seven. Oh goodness! They're not going to a bowl, Stevie. And so they only have two games left. They can't even make it to a bowl then. They're, yep, they can't. Yeah. Um, the big the big debate has been whether Jimbo should give up play calling duties and hire an offensive coordinator, and that loss this weekend, they, I mean, Auburn is just not good. And they're going through coaching changes. This will put this ought to drive it home for uh, the Aggie fans right here. Wow. Oh, and Vanderbilt got a win this week. And that's oh. easy. Oh, another thing uh, about Vandy is. Everyone at Vandy are way smarter than everybody at AM. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, most places. <laughs> oh, I love my Aggies. I, don't, I joke. I kid. You know. And, and what was your stat against AM? Oh, I was four and zero. Oh, really five and zero. Oh, as a red shirt, but four and zero. Oh. You never did what? 
Never lost. Never <laughs> lost to AM. <laughs> That's good so, stuff, man. Jimbo was asked point blank. But the way the offense is going in College Station, will there be some changes in, to the offense in this typical form? This is how Jimbo responded to that. I mean, there's, this, the offense we run is still the same. There's similar all schemes across the board. We just got to call it better, coach it better, and do it better. And, there, and if we bring somebody in, if that whatever what happens, it didn't matter. He's still verticals or verticals, smashes or smashes, and like, we got to get it coached better and do a better job of it. So we'll evaluate everything. Yeah. Again, he didn't say anything, but no. um, um, but if you ask me that question, should he give up the play calling? Something's got to give. Yes, he should. Yeah. In fact, if you ask me the same question about the University of Texas and Sharp Sark being uh, the offensive coordinator, you know what I would love. I would love for a assistant head coach to manage the game while Sark do his thing with the offense only. Only I'm right there. Yeah, he doesn't need to make decisions on anything else. Game day the uh for the game day um calling, uh challenging calls and you know um Going forward on fourth down and things like that is usually the the head coaches, yeah, decision, or going for two and things like that. I want all that stuff off of his plate, and I want him to just call plays and manage the offense. So, I think Jimbo should get a coordinator, but I also think that the University of Texas should get a head coach. Sark is still the head coach, but there's a game day coach. There needs to be a game day coach that handles everything game day, the day of the game. And, you know, if, if Sark want to override a call or override going for two or something like that, yeah, he can do that. But he still needs to focus 100% on the offense. I can see that. I can see there would be a power struggle unless you found the right person. But Right. And so I do understand what I'm saying is revolutionary. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I do understand that. But who said that it can't be done? Because things in college football has changed over the last 10 years, five drastically. years. Drastically. Yeah, drastically. So why can't that part change too, you know? So, um, but that, that's in a perfect world. I would love to see that. I would love to see my head coach just be the offensive coordinator on game day because I think he's a better offensive coordinator than he is a head coach. Yeah, I can see that. And he can recruit. Really well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the SEC, you talk about uh, – so Lane Kiffin lost to his daddy. Nick Saban reminded him who his daddy was. Yeah. Uh, great game. And Kiffin, though, I love him because, honestly, he's brought a level of relevance back to Ole Miss. I mean, I know Ole Miss has, a, has had a few good years every now and then. You know, they beat Oklahoma State in the Cotton Bowl back in twenty. 11, 10, whatever it was, mm-hmm. uh, or nine. And I, and I get it, but he has really, in this short time frame, they're recruiting well. And someone during their press conference after they lost to Alabama asked Lane, uh, hey, Coach, your, your freshman running back had a really good game. I mean, don't you walk away feeling good moving past, you know, the softball questions and trying to reverse it. This is what went wrong. I mean, this is what went great despite the loss. Man, Kiffin wasn't having any part of that. I don't really give a shit about how many yards we had, how close the game was. We didn't win the game. And two years ago, we walked off this field, and I said, we didn't, hear to, we didn't come here to cover spreads. We didn't come here to play what at the time was the number one team in the country close. So all these things about, well, you did this, good, and, you, and freshman running back, rushing, it doesn't matter. We didn't win the game. That's how you respond. You play to win the game. <laughs> who who said he, that? Was that Lovey? No, not Lovey. Oh, no, uh, that was uh, uh Herm, Herm, Herm Edwards. Edwards. You play to win the game. I like it. Uh, I like I like his mentality, man. We always get caught up in the stats and how well 
we did and how pretty the loss was. Remember, I even said this in the beginning of the season when we lost to um, to Alabama. Everyone was talking, oh, man, we almost beat Alabama. We almost did this and we almost did that. It was so much fun. I was like, well, lost the game. We lost the game. Y'all do understand we lost the game, right? We can be happy about this, this, and that, but understand we lost the game. Done. Okay? But that was a moral victory. No, it wasn't. There's no such thing. It was a moral victory. What's – what when we left that stadium, did we have a one in the loss column? And they said yes. And I said, Well, that means we lost the game. So I'm I'm right there with Lane, man. I'm right there with them. I, I don't disagree with them. They're still having a good year, but essentially uh they got some work to do if they want to get back into championship contention. But uh hey, I love it. And we're gonna take a quick break to give a shout out to our guys at Hargrove Roofing, but on the other side, we're gonna have a little fun. It's going to be a quick final segment of episode 200, man. Loving it. Love that I'm celebrating with uh, one of my favorite people, that being Stevie Lee. It's coming back on the other side of this break. I'm Stevie Lee, former defensive tackle for the University of Texas. And I'm Clyde Hargrove. I'm a roofer. I also saw action in 52 games. And I fixed a lot of roofs. Also won a Rose Bowl and never lost to a and And I uh, fixed a lot of roofs, right, Stevie? Oh, right, right, right. I'm sorry. I zoned out a little bit. So are you going to say that thing about Hargrove Roofing? Hargrove Roofing. Know who's on your roof. Is this even going to work as a commercial? This is J.J. Gotch, CEO of the Austin Gamblers, and segment two of Stories Inside the Man Cave is next. Hey, shout out to the Austin Gamblers, man. Great first season of that team bull riding, man. I don't know. Have you been to one of those yet? I haven't gone to one yet, man. Those are, uh, they call the mood the home. And J.J., background of baseball, played it, managed it, everything. And then he's tied to the Ryan family, did great things with Corpus and here in Round Rock. Now he's the CEO of the Gamblers, and they had a great, really, really great first season there. Um, I'm still trying to learn it. I still don't quite understand it. Hey, these, uh, this is the top 10 and four on the outside, according to us. Um, not much has changed at the top in college football. Um, I don't think we can disagree. I did inch TCU above Tennessee this mm-hmm. week. Uh, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan – TCU, I thought for what TCU did defensively in Austin, what they did to Texas, I think that deserves to bump them up because Texas was 18. I love that number 10 right there, man, with UNC. Coach Brown. Mac Brown's my guy. He's going to play for a conference championship. That's uh, that's amazing out there. It was I forget the Coastal Division, I think it is, of ACC or that. Yeah. Yeah. Almost, uh, almost said Austin Country Club. <laughs> is it in Atlanta? Is theirs in Atlanta or in Florida somewhere? Or That's Jackson? a really good question. I need to find that out. ACC championship game. I might. I may need to make a trip to go see my old coach, my old ball coach. Man, if you got space, man, I may have to roll with you. Yeah, man. <laughs> Let me see here. I'm going to look it up. I bet it's in Atlanta. Uh, SEC is usually in Atlanta. Let's, uh, let's see. Where is it? It's going to be – oh, it's in Charlotte. North Carolina, that's what I figured. Yeah. So, it's going to be Clemson in North Carolina. And that's going to be a good one because Clemson's not what they have been. Right. Not what they have been at all. So, yeah, you got uh, Alabama hanging around, still hanging around there. It's going to be – I'm curious. I want to see the SEC standings. I thought I had it memorized. Clearly, I don't. Um, uh, I want to see how Alabama can work their way back in. It, that, that'd be something. So, yeah, uh, Alabama is a game behind LSU. LSU's already won that division. Mm. So, because if they lose, they'll be in a tie with Bama. And so the head to head. So LSU is going to play for the championship. Um, SEC wise against Georgia that, you know what, that may be a pretty good game, but I still think Georgia's got all the talent in the world 
Yeah, and, Georgia, Georgia's rolling right now, man. I love to see them play. I, I love watching them play. They, they really uh, – they're so much fun. Hey, I want to pay tribute to a guy I want you to meet. I don't know if you've had a chance, but his name is Dave Ramirez. He owns Northwest Hills Liquor, and he recommended some things here, and we took him to the, the game yesterday. He, he used to be he used to be the GM of Cover 3 on Anderson Lane for many years, and he decided to get out and be an entrepreneur and buy a liquor store. He's, he's quite knowledgeable, uh, like you, about his bourbons and wines. and But I'm not a big mix things together like you see on the right. But right. the rum chata and the fireball, what would you think that would taste like? Honestly? Yeah. Christmas. <laughs> That's taste close. Like yeah, the cinnamon whiskey and the uh, the milky, what is that, milky like rum? Yeah. Like a um, like a, a a spike latte or a uh, not an eggnog, but a hot a spiked hot chocolate. That's what I think it would taste like. What do you that's think? That's a good direction. That that's a your palate is knowledgeable. Hey man, <laughs> I, I'm I'm a little bit more refined from Shreveport, Louisiana. Now, yeah, you're way you're way out of that league. <laughs> no, you are you are, uh, you are quite knowledgeable. So. <laughs> Again, I'm not big. So we're in the parking garage, our group, before we made our way down to see you guys. And so we've tried to figure out a way to mix the fireball with the rum chata because we were told by Dave, and I'm just not a sweet guy. I just don't. Yeah. Fireball and rum chata together taste like cinnamon toast crunch cereal. Just yeah, like Really? Woo! That makes sense. That makes sense. But, you know, pro tip. Pro tip, you take the um, cinnamon whiskey and take a half of it uh, as a shot, and then you pour the rum shot into the to the little bottle right there, you know, and shake it up. It's a pro tip, man. That's a pro tip. Listen, I went to the University of Texas. We party and we party hard. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. The truth. Yeah. The fun facts, if you will. Yeah, man. Um, so Dave Ramirez – Stevie, if you or any of the viewers here or our audience, go visit Northwest Hills Liquor, support my guy, ask for Dave Ramirez. And I, and, and for you, Stevie, he would be a great conversationalist. About, yeah, he's really knowledgeable through and through. I try to keep it local on the vodka, but that Wheatley vodka is not bad. Not bad. Good, good, good stuff. Everybody thought I just got off an airplane flight with all these stuff, but uh, – <laughs> Yeah, Actually, you gave me one of those. I it's did. Still, it's still in my jeans. <laughs> With the, the rum chata or the wheat? Oh, you gave me one of the wheatleys. Yeah, I, I was like, man, I can't drink all this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll hey. actually, I'll go have some here in a minute. Man, try it. It's not bad. Not all bad. Right. I'm, I'm still uh, dripping springs or Tito's guy, as we mentioned several times. Right. Uh, so this happened tonight. Cowboys lost to Green Bay and Lambeau again. Yeah. Uh, overtime. Should never been in overtime. A guy, Tony Pollard, Zeke's was out. Hit 115 yards rushing and a touchdown. I want to I want to back up Stevie. Pay the man. Pay him. He's making less than a mil. Yep. Put some money in that guy's lap and go ahead and trade away uh Dak. I mean, I'm sorry, not Dak. My bad. Dak stay. Um trade away, <laughs> trade away Ezekiel, man. Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, he has to get – they need to get that um, that that bag off their roster. Yeah. It's, Un it's, unfortunately, it's part of the business. Yeah, it is part of the business. And and, and uh, these kids, they understand that, man. So It's all part of it. Yep, yep. I hate it. Cowboys 6-3 and three now. Um, so, speaking of NFL talent, I love, you know, when uh, – they announce the players. They get to announce themselves before, I think, Sunday night, Monday night, and Thursday night games. Well, this one, this was a great idea. I don't know who it is, but I saw it, laughed. A buddy of mine, Mike Sammons, brought it to my attention because it reminded him of me back when we were young. Uh, we, were in, we were always playing football on the street, always. And I led him deep, and I didn't see the car parked. Led him right into the car. No. uh I almost killed him. He went up over in. He he caught it though. No, he did. He caught it. And flipped over the car. 
head hit the windshield. So this is what reminded him, and uh, he sent this to me. I, I can't wait to see the look on your face. Uh, this is kind of relative to that situation I just told you. 2004 Chevrolet Tahoe, state of Georgia. <laughs> oh, 2004 Chevrolet Tahoe, state of Georgia. <laughs> worth seeing again. Let's check that out, man. That, that was <laughs> short. Here we go. 2004 Chevrolet Tahoe, state of Georgia. Hey man, somebody get us that, that 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 Tahoe scholarship, man. Give that Tahoe scholarship, man. It's a great second year player in the NFL. Yeah, no question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he need a uh, need to get his signing bonus, man. That Tahoe took him out. <laughs> took him. Well, wow, got a good shot. It wasn't targeting. It was a good hit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, man. That was a good one. <laughs> hey man. You know how we do it. Hey, Ben, tell me something good. All right, Stevie, we, we, we all left the stadium angry, depressed. Because that's what we live for. A mm -hmm. lot of college football fans know it. It's how they are toward high school, even NFL. But as you woke up this morning, what, what was good on your plate as you head into uh, this new week? Um, I don't know. The only thing good that I got out of this was just a few minutes ago when you said we have an outside chance of getting to the Big 12 championship. That's right. We have an outside chance, guys. So just went out. We got to hope a couple things happen, which could happen. We we have to do something that we hardly ever done is root for OU. <laughs> yeah, root for the OU. Rooting for OU to beat OSU. Um, and, and us to win out. And we have an outside chance of getting the Big 12 championship. And it's, it still exist. So the goals are still on the table. Goals are still on the table. On the table. They, they're dangling off the table, but they're on it. They're getting farther away. They're slipping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll say this, which what's good is what you just mentioned. But honestly, if we're going to keep it to Texas, it is a simple fact that a lot of us – thought they would be an eight and four team this year. Mm -hmm. They're six and four. All they got to do is win those two. Yep. Um, but winning those two on the road at Kansas is, and that's going to be a day game, thankfully for Texas, but they have lost at Kansas before and it's been a day yeah. game. Yeah. So I, I think this will be a good opportunity for Texas to get that KU monkey off their backs because no question. Kansas if you think about it, the last two years, they won here last year, I believe. And, yeah, it was here in Austin. And then the time before in Austin – well, wait a minute, Kansas played in Austin back-to-back -back years, didn't they? Or was it Dicker the kicker? It required a kick from him here in Austin to beat him. Yeah, I can't remember, man. It's been – it's I've lost track. Yeah. Okay. But we got it. I, we'll be okay. I think the next two games, I think Baylor, Baylor's tough, but that's a home game. Hopefully that'll be at night. Did they set the time for that? I haven't seen it. I have not that's seen that. Friday after Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yep. That's the day after. Yeah, the day after. So hopefully, you know, we're good with that. Um, we just went out, guys. Just That's all we got to do is went out. Went out. I'll tell you another thing that's good is, seeing you guys and just walking around and, uh, man, the two concerts at Longhorn City Limits. It just makes you realize even you see people who really don't – they're not big college football fans. Just seeing everybody, the cool breeze in the air, everybody that's just having a good time and, you know, putting all things aside that may not be good going on. And, man, forget about the politics, man. Live your life. Do good things. And – Make someone's day. That's all Absolutely. you got to do. Tell them, yeah. hey, man, it's glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. Mm -hmm. Something simple like that. I opened the door for somebody last week. This, it was a guy. It was a guy held the door open for me. Like, was a big deal to him in the most positive way. Yep. 
he's probably having a bad week. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Just be the change that you want to see, you know? 100%, man. Be yeah. that person. That's it, man. Stevie, yeah. man, let's go celebrate the whole week. Episode 200. And we're apart. We're, we're going to keep this thing going, whatever we can do. Make it continue. Yeah, keep building on it. Yeah. And much love to our, our, our family at Hargrove, too. Absolutely. Hargrove Roofing. No. No. Roofing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tuesdays with Tess, it'll be, uh, it'll start the next 200. That'll, that's coming up. She's always got some animated taste because she is a de deeply devoted fan, more so than you and I. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's pretty funny. And and she still hasn't. You guys haven't met yet. No. No, we're always in the same place. We're always in the same area, wrong place. Wrong place, <laughs> wrong time. We're going to make that happen. Yeah. Hey, happy 200 to everybody who's been a part of this and for Stevie and his beautiful wife, Summer, and his beautiful family and all the uh, Man Cave boys, that being OG. Thank you guys, that being Hardball Hearts, Big Mike. And the Coach Mo and the pride of Shreveport, Louisiana. We out. <laughs>